The Conspirator, which is um, Robert Redford's new movie. And, I mean, it's, it's interesting because a, a while ago, when this was first, it played at a film festival, and there was some talk about it being an awards contender, and then it just sort of disappeared. And I saw it at the National Press Show this week, and it's very odd for a movie with Robert Redford's involvement to essentially not be very widely screened. I don't know that there was a previous screening of it in the UK, in fact. Um, Should we hear a clip? No, we, uh, well, can we hear a clip on a podcast? Yes. Okay, Apparently yes, fine. We can. Okay, well, let me just set it up yes. for you. Okay, so the story is um, assassination of Abraham Lincoln, the trial of the mother of one of the conspirators. James McAvoy uh, is a soldier, he's becoming a lawyer, who is told, it's your job to defend her. He says, well, no, but, you know, I'm, I, I loved Abraham Lincoln. It's a terrible thing. These people, they say, no, 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 no. Everybody deserves a fair trial. And he then tries to give her a reasonable defence and discovers in the course of doing it that, in fact, the case is weighted massively and unfairly against her. Here's a clip. It's not enough, is it, Mr. Holt? It's not enough that you, uh, you set the rules, you, you, you pick the judges. Now you have to turn my witness as well. Counselor, control yourself. I control the prosecution. Mr. Aiken. Every witness I wish to call has either been turned by a jail or the threat of it. That's enough. There is no limit to how far the prosecution is willing to go. Stand down, Counselor, or I will hold you in contempt. You had better comport yourself in a more appropriate manner, or you will find yourself incarcerated with the others. Colin Meany and James McAvoy. Now, the interesting thing about this film is partly the fact that it's passed so quickly under the radar, and the, the most obvious reason for that is that, to some extent, you know, it is History Channel on the big screen. It is... Do you remember... Um, did you ever see The Invention of Lying? Um, yes, I think it was... It was the Ricky Gervais movie. Oh, yes. In which right, the gag we, was... Yeah, we, yeah, we, he came in and talked about it. That's right. And the gag was that uh, you can't make things up. Nobody's invented lies. So fiction doesn't exist. So, so that movies consist of people reading out of history books. Yeah, really dull stuff. Yeah. Okay, and then he discovers that he can become a hit by making things up, saying the moon's made of cheese and, you know, great big green beetles live in the centre of the... and all that sort of stuff. Well, the funny thing with watching this is that you, you, you do have to go that it, it's not very interestingly made. I mean, one of the things that Robert Redford has always done with his movies is to, um, to make sure that the first scenes essentially tell you everything you need to know about the, the unfolding drama. It's a little thing that he has. It's a sort of trope that he has. And so, for example, at the beginning of Ordinary People, you remember how Ordinary People, sh it's a s series of shots of what looks like an idyllic kind of, you know, suburban idyll, but there's no one in the streets. And it's, it's that classic, you know, uh, thing, what's wrong with this picture? The, the houses are there and everything, but there's no people in it. Well, in, the, in this, what happens very early on is you see James McAvoy's character, he's been wounded on the battlefield, he's with somebody else who's been wounded, the people come along to save him, he says, no, no, you take the other person first. So the first thing you see is an act of self-sacrifice. And in the end, the whole of the drama is about that. It's about James McAvoy's character loses his friends and his reputation because he's basically defending Mary Surratt, who is this, the, the mother of one of the conspirators and is therefore drawn into the conspiracy. The whole country is against them. And what the film does is it asks the philosophical question, which is in times of war, how much does justice go to the wall? You know, it, is it necessary that after an appalling crime that you know, swift retribution seems to be on, or is it more important that the Constitution always stands, that everyone has the right to a fair trial, that everyone has the right to a fair hearing? Now, clearly, the, 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 I mean, if you look at it in the context of things like Lions for Lambs recently, I mean, Redford has always been, a, you know, a liberal with a big L political filmmaker. He does make humanist liberal films. And this asks what some people would consider to be a bland question. I personally don't think it is, which is, you know, in times of warfare, in times of crisis, how important is it to have legitimate justice as opposed to having, you know, military tribunals? How important is it to have proper open court system? How important is it that everyone is given full and fair hearing and the movie takes that idea and it plays it out in I have to say a fairly straightforward way it's very nuts and bolts in the same way that for example the Steven Spielberg film Amistad was much more interesting as a subject than it was as a piece of filmmaking I, I quite like this because I quite like the, just the craftsmanship of what Redford does. I mean, there's nothing flashy about it. It, it. it is done as a sort of solidly put together work. But it is true that you look at it and think the place that this would probably be most at home is two o'clock in the afternoon on, of a school day. They sit you down, watch this and then say, discuss, you know, write about and discuss the issues raised, which is... You know, in the wake of 9-11, in the wake of the war, in the wake of the war against terror, in the wake of Guantanamo, how much these... Also, it ties up with the birth of, um, of, of very important newspapers. It ties up, in fact, in the end, 
this isn't really a plot twist, but I won't give it away, but it does tie up with all the president's men, with political corruption, with the role of investigative journalism, with the idea that in the end there is something greater than all of us, which is the right to a fair hearing. And I think it does that rather, and I like it, I confess, I like it on an ideological and political level first. As a piece of filmmaking, it is somewhat unremarkable. But you know what? The way things are at the moment, somewhat unremarkable, is quite remarkable.